Everyone inevitably gets excited when their business eventually starts growing. But we know that with growth comes more responsibilities and sometimes these responsibilities are overwhelming. Managers and business owners have to know precisely what's going on in their business and the market space is very vital to the success, sustenance and progress of the company. Getting this done is a more significant task than it appears on the surface. But if the right methods are applied, you might end up doing little or no work at all. Don't let the fear of losing be greater than the excitement of winning. At one point, we've been told, or we've probably even told someone else, that sales are a blend of art and science. I think the art part of sales is quite easy to get as it revolves around coaching and leadership skills. The big question now is, what is entailed in the science part of sales? The science is your ability not only to predict performance of your team, but also to scale them and to be ready for any changes that happen in the economy or market space. Well, since this episode borders on how to use data analysis to drive sales, I'll briefly give you hints on what to look for in your data and things that you can find do for you and your business. What should you be looking out for in your data system, be it your CRM or pipeline to let you know what's going on? Because the truth is, is that since we are into data with so many reports, metrics and measurements, you need to capture the right ones and filter the nonsense. How do you do this? You should ask yourself if the data in question has any meaning and let us say it does, the next issue should be what's the purpose? Other fundamental questions you should ask in this process that will help you in the end are what are the gaps in my pipelines and how do I fill those gaps? What are the conversion rates that I will be focused on so I know my reps are successful at any given sales stage? But the biggest question is how do you even collect this data? How do you take the data and analyze and understand it? How do you make decisions based on the data? Real-time decisions like where you should put your resource. The first lesson I'd like you to learn in this video is that you can't achieve any of these things if you don't understand what you're looking at. Let's go over the steps in creating a sales analysis report. The sales analysis report allows you to look into the performance of various departments in your business or even look into specific products. But before you create a sales analysis, you must outline your measurable objectives, such as the frequency of repeat customer sales at a particular location, the number of new customers acquired in a given period, outline and define the most frequently purchased products during a campaign or any specific time frame. Choose as to how often you plan to track your sales. This can take the form of quarterly, monthly or weekly reporting but the frequency should depend solely on the nature of the sales. For example, you may want to report more often during time marketing campaigns and promotions than you want during a typical business month. The next thing you should be doing is to determine which variables will provide the necessary data you need to meet your objectives. And the level of detail at this stage determines how granular you want to get with your sales analysis. It's advisable that you start at the top and then go deeper into more detailed variables. For fundamental sales analysis, you should start with high level variables like date, sales amount, and the location. But if you want to obtain details on a particular service, product, or customer behavior, you should consider including more detailed variables to gather more in-depth data, such as product categories, product number, gross margins of the products, customer data, sales campaign metrics. After this, make a compilation of your sales data manually or you can export it from your CRM software into the spreadsheet. Once you have all the data in a spreadsheet, you can select options that allow you to automatically convert it into a bar chart or a line graph or you can create a dashboard. Then use a data set, a yardstick and show which sales or variables are growing, decreasing or maintaining a standstill positioning. If you intend to gain a historical view of sales performance, you can put tracking variables and increments over the life of your business into consideration. Once you've turned your data into a chart, the final step in creating a sales analysis report is to provide analysis. Point out emerging sales trends by asking a question like, what products or services are customers buying together? When are particular items or services selling the most? Is there a seasonal trend amongst buyers? 
Are your repeat customers buying different items than first time customers? However, if a product is not performing well after your analysis, you'll, you'll look into the reason for such poor performance. And the mere fact that a product is not doing so well doesn't mean you should do away with it. That's not the whole point of analysis. If a product or service is underperforming, you should make effective changes, either to the marketing tactics like selling at a discounted price compared to what other sellers are offering and consider gathering some customer feedback on such product or service. You may also reposition the product or service and target a specific customer demographic. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, this is Matt Damlapanar. Do you know the difference between data analytics, machine learning or artificial intelligence and how your daily life gets affected with any of those? So you can find out it in the Analytics of Life which is available at Amazon Kindle Store. Good luck and I hope you enjoy reading it. Take care.